Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. So um, I'm excited to be back for another uh, semester of sharing um, ideas on, on, on Monday nights, on these musical Monday nights. Um, so just a couple quick things, and then I'm going to start sharing um, about a lesson idea you can use um, using popsicle sticks. You could use maybe K, one, two, three, depending on how you level it. Um, that's what I'll get to in just a second. But first, if you hear me talk about any resource book, game that you're like, that's really cool and interesting, where can I learn more about it? Um, there's a whole page on my blog dedicated to all the links that I talk about in these videos. So um, if you click the link at the bottom of wherever you're watching, listening to this, you should be able to go straight there. Or you can just go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, click the video tab and find the tab for this current year. Um, also, there's a Facebook page if you're interested in a uh, page, a group if you're interested in joining and having more conversations about music education. Search for Every Moment Matters in Music Education Community in um, the Facebook search thing, and um, you can find that. And um, that's a place where you can ask questions. Um, you know, dive deep, learn from other people. It's a just a great place to uh, learn with other folks. So if you're interested, that's out there. One more thing, um, so just less than an hour ago, I posted the names of the winners that, uh, for a weekend giveaway that I was doing this last weekend. Um, and so if you are interested, uh, you uh, I, keep your eyes and ears peeled this Friday because there's going to be another giveaway opportunity um, for next weekend, next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So um, check back to um, my Facebook page and Instagram and wherever it is you're getting this uh, because there's going to be there going to be another giveaway opportunity. If you missed this last one, um, there's another one coming up, and this is all about books and how you can use them um, in your classroom and uh, some free resources. So anyway, that's that's out there if you're interested, or it's coming on on this this weekend coming on Friday. Okay, so let's talk about popsicle sticks. So when I first started teaching. Um, I wasn't really sure how to get into reading notation, writing notation, how to get students to play with notation, um, not just not, not just notation, but like rhythmic dictation, how to get them to um, write what they hear, how to do that in sort of an easy way. And I think that I started out um, in a more difficult way, like giving them whiteboards, giving them markers and erase. Actually, I remember what I really started doing was I gave them paper and pencils, and that was like the worst because kids would write something and then need to erase it or what and it just took too long well then i switched to whiteboards that got better but i was still having them put in the standard notation um you know so like the full um you know uh oval stem colored oh that marker's not great let me see if I can this again. um like the note head the stem and colored in right like i was still having them do that for each example it took so long it was so frustrating for some kids um and it just it, it took, it wasn't very efficient. And I remember I went to a workshop that Aileen Miracle did many, many, many years ago. And I saw her do some things with popsicle sticks. And I like knew that people had done that, but I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. And her, her workshop just gave me so many great ideas. And so I've taken that and run with it and done some other things with it. And I just want to share sort of a couple ways you can use popsicle sticks with kindergarten, first, second, third, especially to start developing their ear. It can be pre-notation. It can be um, after they've explored some of those rhythm values. So I just want to share a couple ways that you can do that. Um, because there's, there's a lot you can do. And one thing I'll also say is I just started this semester with, um, a student teacher. And, uh, so she and I have been talking about this, a, a little bit. And, um, so it just, it was sort of a fun thing to sort of rethink and re-talk about it in a new way. Cause I was talking about it with Kelly in my classrooms, like, you know, talking through some of the, the ways you can use it. And so I just want to share some of that sort of based on the conversation we had. So popsicle sticks, uh, why should you use them? Why, where can you get them? What are some things you might want? Well, there are regular popsicle sticks, right? And then there are small popsicle sticks. Both are cool. Both are fun to have. You can get the regular popsicle sticks in a box of like a thousand. 
um, for not a lot of money. I put a link on my links page if you're interested. If you want to like buy them from Amazon, you can get them from craft stores. You can get them from Walmart. There, you can get them anywhere. These smaller ones are less easy to find. They're out there. They're just in, in smaller quantities. I put a link for this on my um, links page too, but I, again, you could probably find it at a craft store, a Michaels, or whatever, what have you. Uh, but anyway, it's basically half the size of a regular popsicle stick. You can get colored versions. You can get, I mean, there's so many things you can do um, with them, but um, the basic thing is you just have to have some popsicle sticks first. If you don't have anything, just get the box of a thousand big ones. That's cool. If you have uh, a bunch of sticks and you want to get some more, get the small ones. They're great. You'll see why in a second. So when I start using popsicle sticks, I use it with kindergarten. I use it in pre-notation, you know, before we ever even talk about what is a note, anything like that. We just start talking about sounds. And I say, oh, I'm going to test your ears. How am I going to test your ears? I'm going to test your ears by seeing if you can hear the difference between long and short sounds. Let's try. And so I give kids a little bag, a little Ziploc baggie, and in that baggie are a couple different things. There are um, a bunch of sticks. Usually I have the long sticks and the short sticks, right? And then also I give them four um, different images. These are just Ellison die cut, whatever um, that machine you might use. You probably have in your building. Um, it just four things that I basically, I took construction paper, I ran it through the laminator, and then I ran it through um, the die cut. And I made just tons and tons and tons so that I had enough for four things in each bag. I've done this with leaves. I've done this with sticks. I've, you could do it with any sort of uh, shape you're interested in. It's totally up to you and what you want to do. But I would say more generic is great because I did stars and I use those a lot. I use leaves sometimes, but stars are great because they're generic. You can use them any time of year and kids don't question. So what I have kids do um, is I have them lay out um, See if I can get this so Instagram can see it. Um, I have them lay out the, the sticks or stars or whatever, or sorry, the leaves or stars or whatever it is out in front of them on the ground. And I put a version up on the whiteboard. Now you can just put a magnet on the back so that it sticks. That's a really easy way to do it. Um, I also got fancy this year and I took my iPad and I went to a drawing platform and I put in some stars and then I, I would draw on that. The, the upside... Well, the downside is the iPad, you know, there are digital hiccups, whatever, everywhere. Um, the upside is I never have to turn my back to students. I can always just write on my iPad and then, you know, give an answer. But it's they like seeing me use the actual physical sticks. They like that. It's so it, I think when I first started doing it, um, I used the um, physical version. I think it's a great um, thing to be able to do. Okay, and for those of you who are probably freaking out, let me just turn these all up, right? Because having just one out of I mean, if they were like jauntily, like what a, anyway. So, so now they're all up right now. Probably makes some people a little happier. Anyway, um, so the first thing I do with students in the younger grades is I just play some sounds and I say, I just want you to tell me, is this a long sound or a short sound? And if you hear a long sound, you'll take a stick and you'll put the long stick horizontal like this underneath the leaf and just put the long, the full sized basically stick okay and then um just a second um and then if you hear a short sound um you put a short stick just a second sorry instagram so um if you hear a long sound you put a long stick if you hear a short sound you put a short stick so here's an example um i would take an instrument like the kabasa or something like that, and I would play like, that'd be a longer sound. Or, but when I first start doing this with kids, you need to have like some very obvious contrast. If you say like long, short, they will not hear that. And so I try and do like a really big, longer sound. You could even roll it for a while versus Right, so a long versus a short, something that's very, very obvious for them. Um, and so when I do that, then, you know, I'll go at the very first time, like kindergarten, first grade, I'll do like one star at a time. I'll just do one example um, at a time. So, great, do you need to hear that again? Let me play it for you again. Right, and then they put down the star. And they say, great, let's do another star. And I'll go, I'll, or sorry, another star. I'll go, 
then to the next leaf is what I have now. And I'll go one by one as I go through either long or short sounds, right? And I'll make it really, really, really clear. Um, and I, I just go through and give them that um, the first couple times with different instruments. I'll talk about instruments you might use in a second. Uh, sorry, Instagram, it sounds like you've got a little technical difficulty. Can you hear me now? Maybe it's working now? Sorry, Instagram, if things are not working so well. Um, anyway, so I would go through and give an example like that, a long sound, a short sound. Cool, let me just restart Instagram. Um, a long sound, a short sound. Sorry, I'm just redoing Instagram over here. Cool. Love it when technology just mm, cuts out because it happens. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, hopefully people will be able to connect that way. Anyway, so when I do it with kindergarten or first grade, when I really get started there, it's usually um, one star or, or one sound at a time, one thing at a time. Um, and I'll do just long and short sounds, really, really simple. So I'll do it on a couple different instruments. Usually I do several examples um, so that they really get that in their, in their heads. They really sort of get the idea of that. Eventually I'll do like two leaves at a time, two leaves. Um, so the first two leaves, the second two leaves, and then I'll do all four at a time. And I'll always try and like go for like a pattern, like ta, 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 or sorry, short, short, long, short, or something, because they're used to the bum, 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 right? Or like long, short, long, short. I give them lots of space. I repeat it as many times as they need. I just want them to be successful hearing long sounds versus short sounds, and that's sort of where it starts. Then, if we want, um, you know, I can, uh, I'll eventually say like, you know, you can do it horizontal like this, or, what if we flip them on their side and then it would be sort of like tall and short, but like it, you could still do this. This is like a pre-notation thing, right? But you could do that if you want. Usually when I'm first doing kindergarten, I'll do just long and short, just horizontal. And um, I'll do it different timbres, I'll sing, I'll play piano, I'll do whatever, just to give them lots of sounds to listen for and um, some ideas. Okay, so uh, then eventually I'll do something like, um, I'll have, an example up there. So right now I have long, short, long, short, and I'll say, great, um, I've got long, short, long, short up there. Leave your answer. I'm just gonna change one thing. Okay, Instagram, can you hear me now? Sorry there are so many issues. I hope you're able to hear me. Um, anyway, I'll say, I'm just gonna change one thing. I'm just gonna change one part of this. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see if we can change it. So then instead of doing like, Right, so that's long, short, long, short. Um, then I would just change one. And so maybe I would do long, 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 short or something, right? And I give them the example and they have to listen for which one changes. And so I'll go through and try and do it um, so it's like easy for them to hear along the way. So it's like a very obvious when that thing changes and when it doesn't change. So I'll, I'll, they'll have the answer in front of them and we'll go through and just change one. And then maybe we'll change a different one, right? So along the way as we're going, we're just changing one thing sort of at a time um, so that they can really understand like which one is it that that's different, right? So for kindergarten, at first it's just long and short sounds. Then we'll sometimes take out a sound. So there's no sound. Right, so long, long, short, right? And uh, at that point, I usually have to tap along so they know right where something is. This is a great one to be like, here's your example, and let's take one out. Now, how can they, if, like, let's say I have my example now, long, 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 short. If I take one out, let's say I take the second sound out, long, silence, long, short, a lot of kids are gonna have an error here. They're gonna go long, long, short, and they're just gonna put long, long, short, and then a space at the end, because they won't feel that like space in between. So what I might do is I might say, okay, I'm just gonna do the first two. I'm just gonna do my first two spots, my first two beats, long, right? And so then they're like, wait, you had long, and then nothing. I'm like, uh-huh, and then the last two, long, short, 
right? And so the so then you can sort of isolate that one beat so that they know right where it is, um, and it gives them a chance to really hear where that um, that silence is. So for example, if I were gonna like do that to this example, and I'm gonna play an instrument, let's see, use my well, I'm gonna use my egg shaker. So I would go through and go. Right, that would be with the silence. So then we would take that out. And at first with kids, when we do that, just because it's an icon, just an idea, instead of putting a rest or a symbol like that, we might just put an X, like there's nothing there. We could put a, uh, we could say there's zero sound there. Z -z -z zero starts with a Z. Okay, kindergarten. And they could make a Z there if they wanted. It's just, it's up to you as to what you want to do when you encounter that. But at first, well, this is all pre-notation, so I just get, an X works just fine. I just don't want them to leave nothing there because if they put nothing in that spot and there's no placeholder, they will fill it in with the next sound. So to let me know that they know, I have them put some sort of placeholder here, and that's like up to them. Okay, then as we go either in kindergarten or first grade, depending, then we'll start putting in two sounds per beat. And so again, I might go through one by one, right, and do this example again with longs and shorts. And then I might say, okay, here's the first star, and I'll do long. Okay, here's the second star. Great, wait, what was that? Was that long or short? It was short, but wait, how many shorts? Too short. Wow, I didn't know we could do that. Okay, great. So then I put in there too short, right? And it's basically like to get them to the point of hearing eighth notes, right? So uh, you, I would do long, and it's probably hard to see from back there, but I've got my two short sticks right next to each other. And on my whiteboard at school, um, I, I space that out as far as I possibly can that's still within that, um, that like placeholder area so that they can actually see that there are two sounds, but it makes sense, like, it doesn't like look like it's in two separate things, but I, I try and put the um, I try and put the two short sounds in there, if that makes sense. Just so the visuals, like it, I'm sure, like Facebook, I think you could probably see that there are two separate smalls. I don't know. Instagram is probably sort of hard because it's a smaller, um, smaller visual. Anyway, um, so we will then add like what long versus too short. Right, and so you have long and short, and then eventually we can add in, you know, we can flip them on their sides. So you can have a tall, too short, a tall and short, and then you can even put the top on, and then you have ta, ta di, ta, and then whatever you want to do in the last one, right? So you can go from just long and short sounds to long, short sounds, no sound. You could then go to long, two short sounds on one beat, uh, no sound if you want. Um, and so it gives you lots of op options. And then eventually I would give kids a bag with no short sticks at all, just long sticks. Because once they've had this experience with the short sticks of putting two short sounds and putting them together to make it look like an eighth note, then they can uh, just jump in and do with long sticks. So you have ta, ta. So now all the sticks are the same height. And as you go, now you're on to notation. Usually this, I would do this per, like concurrently with like learning uh, quarter notes and eighth notes so that they can like see the the similarities and a lot of times when I teach quarter notes and eighth notes the first time I do it with stick notation so like I mean with actual literal sticks like this or instead of uh, putting the note head on I could just put like a line right and so sometimes we'll intersperse an activity like with a bag of popsicle sticks or with whiteboards and I would have them do the same sort of activity listen for sound is it long or short or is it one sound two sound um, and instead of maybe using physical sticks, maybe we just use, um, you know, whiteboards and draw in the sticks. So if we had like ta di ta, ta di ta, they could just do the stick notation, ta di ta, ta di ta. And that's, that's a way to, to like take this on the, on the next step. What else could you do with this if you wanted to level it up? If you're like, this is great, but like, this is like, how do you take this to like second or third grade? Well, once you've done this, like you can take the sticks and you can do a lot with them. Once the kids have the bags with all just the full size sticks and you know, you've moved past for listening to long and short. Now you know that you're basically using sticks just to dictate a melody, right? Like kids love, or not a melody, a rhythm. Kids love that. So let's say you got ta, 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 di, ta. Okay, ta, 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 di, ta. If you want to do something more complex, um, you can, you know, 
do as much as you want. When I start adding in half notes, um, I had all the teachers at my school donate little, um, well, not donate. I said, like, before you throw away your uh, milk jugs, can you take the little, like, ring, like the seal? Can you can, can you take that off and wash it and give that to me? So then we have all the little, like, pink and blue and green, whatever, like, rings from the top of the milk jug. Um, and so when we get to half notes, you can't just, like, have a stick and an empty space behind it, but you can take that little ring and set it right next to the note, and it looks like a half note. And kids love that. So when we get to break out those little rings, they're, like, all about that. So that's how you can sort of move into half notes. Um, you could probably find a way to do this with half rest. I don't know. It, it'd be a little tricky probably, but you could um, do that. Um, let's see. Another thing that you could do uh, is you can absolutely do 16th notes. Right? So when you're, when you're ready for that, kids can use the same process that you, they did and use and do 16th notes if you want. Another thing you can do um, if you want more options is um, you can do two lines. So you can have, you know, your four spots, right? But you can have a top line, ta, 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 di, ta. And then underneath it, I'm out of long sticks, but you could do like another row, right? So you can just keep adding. One thing I really like to do with this that uh, I did more like pre-COVID times, but now we're sort of getting more back to rotating and switching, is to have kids in rows do this and then shift over one. Or maybe you make a, a set of eight beats. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, on the bottom. Um, four on the top, four on the bottom. You write some out and then you shift and then kids have to read or change or do whatever. Then it's moving away from like, rhythmic dictation into like creation and, and sharing with other people um let's see yeah so you can do one level you can do two levels you can do more complex rhythms the sticks allow you to do pretty much anything the only one that doesn't really work like i said is half note and that you can fix if you use um that little ring if you want some instruments to think about and with if you're starting out just like i'm going to do this i'm going to start with the long and short sounds um an instrument that gives you a really good duration is good to use. So like um, an egg shaker where you can just shake it for a long amount of time versus short. That's pretty good. The kibasa sort of works, but it's like only as far as you can roll it, right? Like to give you a longer sound. Um, one that works really well but is annoying is the ratchet, you know. It can go as long as you want and kids love and hate it, but uh, it can give you long and short sounds really easily. One that um, probably you don't want to use unless you want to have this conversation is the triangle because kids at first, right, they'll just be like, short, it was short. I'm like, is it short? It's still ringing. And they're like, oh, but does that count? I'm like, yeah, it's still making a sound. So, you know, so we, when with my older kids, I don't do this as much with kindergarten, but with my older kids, we'll click and listen and wait until it ends and we'll see, is that long? And you could do long versus hold it and don't let it don't let it ring right so a ringing version versus a just a short so that gives you another sort of a long versus short um, another great one to use is recorders um, I also step down at the piano sometime but the recorders are nice because then you can do you know you know it's really easy to hear the hear that um, a, a thing that I love doing is you know if I'm having a younger grade, um, you know, right out of rhythm I'm playing. And, and sometimes with the younger grades, they will mess up, you know, first, second, third, fourth. They will get a little mix up. Um, because it's a melodic instrument, each beat can have its own, um, its own tone. So you could do... Right, so like then it's very clear, like there are two beats on for each note, you know, so for each um, tone, right? So... where it's, it's easy for kids to like bleed things together when they're just hearing a rhythm. When they're hearing it melodically, it, it's a little bit clearer, if that makes sense. So you can do a uh, you know, soprano um, recorder, that's really fun. This is also another great time to break out your alto because they like hearing the difference in sound, they like seeing it, it looks different. Right, and so you can, you, it, you can play it really, um, 
it's less sort of shrill. It's less, high, you know, it's not as high, but also it just, uh, the tone is just a little different. The timbre's a little different. So it's a fun instrument to break out too. You could do alto, you could do tenor, but it's nice to be able to bring out your other sizes of recorder. And this is a, a great lesson to do that with. But there are a lot of things you can do with this once you get started. So I would say to get started, think about how you might integrate with like a kindergarten class if you're testing, you know, can you hear long versus short? Can you do, um, you know, can you can you track that? Can you do sound versus silence? That's another great thing to do. And then to sort of figure out like, okay, I just need a box of popsicle sticks. One would probably make you enough um, baggies so you have enough baggies for 30 baggies, you know, kids, whatever. And then you just go through and decide, well, what sort of shape am I going to use? How am I going to get this? You could even use pre-cut die cuts, like if you wanted to get them from Dollar Tree, if you want. Uh, the one tip I would say with when you're doing this as an example for kids on the board, you might want to write like one, two, three, four on your leaves, on your stars, on whatever it is um, that you're using because um, then you can refer to them as like first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. You can still do that, but I wouldn't say like, oh, the green beat because kids, if they have different colors from you, might get confused. So numbering them is really um, a really helpful thing. Um, and let's see. Um, yeah, so I would just say if you're getting started, you don't have any of this already, get some baggies, get the large size sticks, and then cut out whatever sizes you want or get over whatever sizes you want for the die cuts. And then if you wanna get really adventurous, get the smaller sticks, those are really fun too. The other way that I'm making, one other teacher tip thing I wanna share is the way I'm making them stick to the board is magnets, right? And um, this is a great time of year to go around to banks, uh, credit unions, other places and say, hey, do you have any of those like magnet calendars that you give away for free? from 2022 because I'd be happy to take those off your hands. There are a lot of organizations that will like, you know, give those away as freebies. And then at the end of the year, they're like, well, what do we do with these extras? Give them to me. I'll cut them up and put some double-sided tape on them and use them in my classroom in tons of different ways. Um, so this is the time of year where I go around and ask for some of those things. You could also just use magnet strips. If you have the adhesive ones, you could buy them. But um, I like to take, anytime someone sends me something in the mail, um, you know, like, from a, a realtor or whoever and they're like giving you a magnet um i keep those and i use them and i cut them up and use them for visuals in my classroom okay this gives you some ideas of what you could do with these popsicle sticks if you want when you're using these for notation but there are so many other um ideas or other ways you could use them um if you're listening to this or watching this i would love if you would leave a comment about like hey i've used this here's what i do or here's some other things you could do because once you get started i mean eventually you could even just hand out popsicle sticks you don't need to give them you know the the placeholders but these placeholders at first especially in kindergarten are really really helpful but for older grades you could just say like okay you know we're gonna do four beats or whatever and and you can really just go wild there are so many things you can do but it just saves so much time as opposed to like writing out all the notation that just takes a lot of time and really slows a bunch of kids down okay sorry instagram that there were some technical issues i hope y'all can hear maybe not um facebook friends thanks for coming along with me today i'll be back again next week but also um don't forget check out this friday come back to my facebook page um and check out because i'm gonna have um, another opportunity for a giveaway for book resources. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.